and welcome back to me and Apex, but well, me and Arenas, the new game mode for Apex that everyone's loving. Yep, there it is, here it is. Um, so I'm gonna be showing you guys a few tips and tricks for Arenas and ways to improve, things you can do better, things you might have overlooked, uh, hopefully to help you get you guys some more wins. Uh, the footage in the background is also from when I played with the pro recently, so yeah, a little bit of a chill vibe there. Hope you guys enjoy and hope it helps, let me know. Oh, you're so much better. Let's go, Devo. So number one, and one of the most important things, obviously, when playing arenas is the heroes you play and knowing what heroes to play. There are obviously going to be some heroes that are better than other heroes in arenas, but this also is largely based on you and who you feel comfortable playing with. Playing with. At the end of the day, you should be playing the heroes that you're comfortable on. Don't put yourself, you know, outside your comfort zone playing a hero you have no idea how to play just because someone else says it's better for arenas. Um, but in saying that, the heroes that you do want to try and look at, some of the most important heroes are someone like Gibby for his bubble to take uh, to take position uh, to get you the meds to you know secure back teammates when they're down uh lifeline lifeline helps you get extra meds from the crates she has tapras she has a heal built in uh pathfinder octane they both have the ability to you know get you extra movement extra position off the start of the game they also have the ability to push enemies when they're low get position on the map get high ground on the map there's also Loba, who has an amazing ult, which you can use to steal the meds around the map and things like that. So I will be doing a hero uh, a hero tier list for Arena. It might already be up, but if it's not, it'll be up soon. And when it is, I'll make sure I pin it in the comments below. But definitely go check that out, as that will give you a full breakdown of every hero in Arenas and who you should and shouldn't be playing. But as I said, at the end of the day, play who you're most comfortable with, and that is what is most important. But I'm just saying, Gibby is insane. And if you don't have Gibby on your team, you're doing something wrong. Alright, and on to number two, and what is one of the most important things when it comes to arenas. Mainly seem like a small thing, but it is very important. Learning, crafting, material, spawns. So, arenas is based off, you know, the economy system, as getting crafting materials, the economy, allows you to buy, uh, you know, your guns, your nades, your meds, etc, etc. And having better guns, or more nades, or more meds, especially the meds, is going to help you beat your teammate, uh, beat your enemies, sorry. So knowing where the crafting spawn on the map and knowing how to get them, stopping your enemy getting them so that you end up with more compared to them going into the future rounds is very important to winning each round and winning the ultimate game. Because apart from the set base that each team gets every round and the 75 per kill that you get, these are the only other way to get more crafting materials and have more. So it's very important to do so. So make sure you know where they're located as I think will be on screen right now as well. Um, and for work out and focus as a team on how to get them. And number three. Number three is pretty similar to number two. It is about, once again, learning spawns, but this time not crafting materials. It is a med spawns. It might seem pretty obvious to know where they spawn and, you know, how to get them and whatnot, but getting these is basically, in some sense, win or lose every single round, minus, you know, a big mishap or a big play happening. Um, most rounds are going to be one off getting a lot of chip damage and running, and running the enemy team out of meds and playing them into a position where they can't move for zone later on. So getting how to get these off spawn you're going to get more than your enemies, is enabling you and setting you up to win the entire match. So learn where these are. Work at how you're going to get them as a team off spawn and stop your enemies getting them. Whether this is playing something such as Gibby and able to bubble forward and holding it while you grab them all, or whether it's playing <clears throat> something like Pathfinder and grappling forward and Loba and queuing forward at the start to get them fast, or even using Loba and her black mark to take them before the enemies can get them. It is very important to be able to win the war of the meds and get these before your enemies so that you have more than them. Um, a big tip also with this is Lifeline. If you play Lifeline, <clears throat> which is obviously a really good hero because tap rest and everything, but also she gets extra she gets extra meds when she opens them. She gets extra cells down bottom that pop out. I think it's about eight all up extra she gets, which is a large amount. Number four, on to number four. Ah, this one's pretty quick and easy, uh, but also very important just to know. Money you don't spend at the end of a round or at the start of a round when you're buying the thing, um, when you're buying your items for that round, money you don't spend and you have left over there doesn't disappear and go to waste. So don't feel the need to 
purchase up everything and purchase up extra items just to use that money. That money will transfer over to the next round. So it is good to keep that in case you don't need anything extra. There's no point using it now. You might need next round. So save it up and buy something bigger and better next round if you want. Or, you know, you could do like a little mini eco round and use cheaper guns if you know you're not in the best spot and save up money to big buy next round so you can win that. Number five, number five. All right, so number five is once again very similar to number four and based around the way that things transfer across from one round to the other, but this time it's your abilities. Um, your abilities do transfer across from one round to the other if they're not used, but this is based off only abilities you buy, not your base abilities. So example, with Gibby, you will have your base dome. If you don't use that dome, um, you, that doesn't transfer across and stack then with the next dome you get. You will have one dome at the start of every single round no matter what because it pre-gives it to you, but if you were to say buy a second dome, but then you didn't use that dome from the uh, in that round, you will keep that dome going across to the next one. So you would have two to start with for you then to buy future ones on top of, which is very useful to know. So if you're at the end of a round, you may be in a round, you're about to win the fight, don't use your abilities. There's no need to it. You're just going to waste it. Or if you're you know, in a losing situation, maybe you just let yourself die yeah, instead of wasting your abilities trying to win the un unwinnable battle and save your abilities for the next round so that you can uh, put them to use there and try and get the win there. Number six, or sex, as they say in German. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, number six, so uh, learning head glitches, learning peaks. This is very important. Whilst Apex is a, you know, a movement-based game, um, this arena they brought in is, you know, in some essence, a CSGO style where getting peak damage is very important. Holding peaks is very important. Having head glitches is, as always, in Apex in general as well, very important as it gets you damage and makes yourself extremely hard to hit. So learn where the head peaks are, as you see on screen, I'm probably showing you a few different little head peaks, but learn where the head peaks are, learn where the head glitches are, learn where good peaks are in general, and you'll have a much better chance of dealing larger damage to your enemy while they deal smaller damage to you, which will then win the uh, win the war of nutrition, aka the war of having the most meds and HP, and help win it, and help to go forward to win you the game in general. It also gives you the ability, you know, if they're unexpected, if they're not expected to where you might be, allows you to get the big damage off, then you can push off that, be aggressive, etc. etc. It's just, you know maximizing your chance for success and minimizing your risk for, you know, peaking at one. Number seven. Can't think of anything funny to say. So number seven. Number seven is going to be about care packages and knowing what's in them. Knowledge in this type of game is extremely important. Not just knowing where your teammates are, what type of guns they have, what their heroes are, their abilities, etc. But also knowing care packages and what can be in the care packages. If you, When you're in the buy screen, if you look in the bottom right corner, I'll actually show you for that round what three guns will be in the care package. Those three guns will change every round as well. So knowing that will tell you if that care package is going to be important for you to get. Um, you can you know, decipher whether it's going to be important for your enemy team to get. If it's got something like just basic weapons, it's probably not going to be very important. But if it's got a Kraber in it, then hell, you're going to want to go for that for sure and not let your, not let your enemy team get it. You know, if you're playing Gibby and it's got a PK in it, well, goddamn, Gibby, PK, Bubble, Arm Shield, what more could you want in your life, you know? It's very good to know what's in it, um, what you need to go for. It also lets you distinguish on what you might need to buy in the buy phase as well. Like, like I said, if you're playing Gibby and there's a PK or Mastiff or whatnot in the care package, you might not need to buy that PK, care, uh, PK yourself. You can buy an AR instead and then play around getting that care package to then fight later in the game with that PK. Uh, it allows you to do a lot of different things, allows you to manage your economy, and it's just very important to know. All right, so this is number eight, and one of the, if not the most important uh, tip that I can give you. I don't know why I'm at eight, maybe I should have been number one, but this is very important, and it is zones. You can tell where zones are at the start of the, the, start of the game, obviously, for the circle on the map. But from that, you can also tell where the zones are going to pull to. And playing off that in arenas is extremely important. The rounds don't go for very long. So playing from the start inside the zone and getting good position inside that zone to hold the enemy team out and to force them out as the zones come in further towards you is extremely important. It gives you the ability to get free damage while they move in. You can sit, anchor yourself there, and it's on them to make the moves. And that's largely and a lot of times going to include them crossing through the open and that gives you the ability to shoot them while they do so or if they use their abilities to get through the open they're using that to do rotate not to shoot you it gives you all the advantages under the sun you know position is absolutely none of the everything in games especially uh, games like arena so learn how these zones move learn where they are and where they sit on the map learn the high spots you know the good positions to sit in on the map to give you all the advantages that there are to having that
and you will trust me, you will win so, so, so many more games if you play positional based in arena. Might not be the most fun thing to do. Yeah, you're not out there instantly shooting people off the start, rushing them, but if you play positional and you play zones, you will win double the amount of games you're winning right now. Playing zones is it's absolutely everything in this game mode. So number nine, nine, eight, so nine. Uh, and something that is going to be unique to every different team and each person is play styles. Know how you're going to play the game and communicate that with your teammates. Maybe you're not in the three stack or in a duo stack and you're solo queuing, but still try and talk in game, communicate with your team. After all, Arenas is a team-based game and a game that is very important to have the ability to play off your teammates, have them cover you while you're healing, have them push with you, hold your angles, hold your peaks. So communicate with your teammates and work out the game styles that you're going to be played, the game styles, the play styles that you guys are going to play together. Whether this is, you know, the aggressive pushing games to off the start, catching them unaware, or the sitting back and playing the uh, you know economy based, wearing their meds out, getting all the meds around the map, getting all the crafting materials, playing position, playing zone, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whatever it is and whatever works best for you, try out a few different ones if you need, but communicate that with your team and try and do that in the best unison that you can with them. You know, communications win games after all is one of the most important things there is. So do that the best best to your ability. Work on that. And you guys have got this. And on to number 10. All right, so number 10 is something that is largely overlooked, not only just in the BR, but also in Arena, and that is going to be grenades. Grenades are one of the most powerful things in Apex Legends and something that are used nowhere near enough. They have the ability to change the game in the, you know, in the click of a fingers. Um, so, nades. You want to get them as much as you can. Maybe not in the very early rounds or if you do only one, but later on in the games, you want to be buying three. Three is the max you can buy and you want to be buying them. These can be used in so many different ways. They can be used to do damage, which is what a lot of people think they're used for, but largely that's not what you're going to be using them for. You're going to be wanting to use them to move people where you want, move the enemies where you want them to be, push them out of cover. So when the nade lands on them behind cover, they've got to move, they've got to run out of cover. When they run out of cover, you guys can shoot them. You know, you guys can target, shoot them and kill them or do lots of damage, which then wins you the worn meds or allows you to push off it, etc., etc. You can also use it to stop people going where you want, them, where you don't want them to go, force them back in other directions. Um, if you're getting chased, you could also drop on at your feet while you're running to stop them, uh, stop them in out chase you and create space for yourself. Uh, one thing I will say about grenades is after an update recently, not that it's a big thing in arenas because there's not too many doors, but thermites. Thermites are nowhere near as useful as they used to be. They used to be my favorite nade, and I think one of the best nades in the game. But ever since the change they made a while ago, maybe about a season ago. They, uh, thermites are really hard to get to tick people through doors. It's really hard to burn people through doors. So if you're looking at them to break doors, I wouldn't really use thermites anymore. It's better just to use an arc star or a frag grenade and stick and throw it through the bottom little crack in the right corner, which you can do now. So that's much better. And also, I'm sure you all know, but just to let you know, they did make a change with arc stars recently, where when you first get stuck by the arc star, you don't you don't actually get slowed now. It only um the only slow effect that comes is when the arc star blows up. But yes. Buy nades, use them efficiently, use them to move players around, move them out of cover, uh, communicate with your team when you do so, target fire the person you move out from cover, and you will do amazing. Number 11, legs 11. All right, so uh, secondary weapons, you know, it may seem really uh, enticing to have two weapons on you at all times, but that's not really always needed. Uh, by default, you will always get a P2020 or a Mozam as your secondary weapon. If you don't choose a weapon, uh, it will give you one of those two at random. So make sure you do choose a secondary weapon, either being the Mozam or the P20 as they are free in the buy menu. I highly recommend getting the Mozam as it is really good consistent damage in six shots. It's honestly insane. It's in my opinion, a lot better than the P20, unless you have an extremely accurate, extremely fast trigger finger, which I personally don't. But if you do and that works for you, hey, go for it. But my go here is always the Mozam. I honestly think for at least the first three, four rounds, uh, having a Mozam as your secondary and you know maxing out, not maxing out, but having more money put into meds, your your main gun and grenades is a much better play. Um, but if you do end up going for a secondary, I would definitely wait a few, a, a few rounds at the start and then look at picking up something like an Eva, which is only 250. This is very, very cheap compared to the other shotguns and the other SMGs for that matter as well. But in general, you know, your Mozam is going to do you as a secondary gun uh, very well. It is a consistent 40 damage every shot, six shots. That's, that's very good. It's a very, very good for something that comes completely free. Completely free. Five finger discount. That's amazing.
number 12 and a pretty big tip it is focusing on getting your position as i know we did focus on this earlier but we're going to focus this at a different point in time in the match now this is going to be off spawn so to start with don't waste time in your time in your buyer position so make sure you're ready to go the second that door opens or the second the uh you know the barrier disappears because you want to be able to get in there and get position in the arena before your enemies and the best time you can to give you the best chance to do opening damage on them so don't sit there in the buy arena and not buy your stuff till the very last second get ready and get ready to go um Something that goes on from this as well is if you're playing heroes like Octane or Pathfinder, for example, there is the opportunity to, and I think it's a very good thing to do, to buy jump pads or your ultimate zip for Pathfinder, you know, your zip line, and use those to get you and your team forward into those positions faster than your enemy. So then it allows you to control the map and get opening damage, etc., etc. It's very good to do. Uh, just a heads up, Pathfinder Zipline is extremely cheap. I think at the moment it's only 150 crafting materials and is the, one of the cheapest items in the game and something that you should be buying as much as you can. Octane's uh, jump pad, I think, is maybe at 300. It's a little bit more expensive, but also very, 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 very expensive.